Good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to our weekly Learning Your Lunchtime webinar. It's a great pleasure to welcome everybody. Uh, we go live on the Student Success Coach YouTube channel every Friday at 12 o'clock. It's really just an opportunity for us to spend time as a team and as a community. Uh, we share some important coaching tips. Uh, we interview some fantastic guests. And even last week, we gave away three laptops to uh, deserving students. So if you missed that webinar, uh, do go back and check that out. Uh, we ran a bit of a competition in our Facebook group uh, for people to nominate themselves and to make some comments on a post. And then we looked at all the reactions to those posts and we had three finalists and uh, I had asked Tracy Ashington to make a decision about which of those three finalists uh, would be getting the laptop from our anonymous donor. And she came onto the webinar and amazingly she said, uh, which was a complete surprise to me, uh, that we were able to secure three laptops. So all of the three finalists uh, in that laptop giveaway uh, should be receiving their laptop in the next uh, week or so. It's all ordered uh, and on its way to you guys. So that's just one of the many benefits you get from being part of the Student Success Coach um, community. And today uh, I've got Salil joining us talking about uh, digital marketing interviews. Um, so those of you that are looking for a career in marketing uh, and are studying in that field, uh, today will really be an opportunity for you to think ahead to the workplace, think ahead to preparing yourself for a possible interview uh, for that type of role. Think about the things that you should be learning and getting up to speed with. Now, uh, digital marketing has completely changed, um, in fact, marketing as an industry. Uh, my wife studied marketing, and if I look at you know, what she was studying 20 years ago, uh, in terms of marketing, it has completely changed um, in uh, in the last number of years. So um, you must be absolutely um, aware of how these things have changed and what's happened uh, in the world of digital marketing. Uh, so please do make sure that you uh, get your questions ready and uh, go into this uh, webinar this afternoon really with a strong expectation to um, ensure that you learn as much as you can. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll have Salil joining us uh, very shortly um, so that you can uh, ask him those questions. And we've actually got a course uh, ready for you. Um, uh, and you can then go into that course and uh, you can take advantage of all the lessons that we put together for you um, after this uh, session. So we've got Salil uh, joining us very shortly. And as everybody's joining us today, fantastic to see such a big group again. Uh, please do say hi in the chat. Uh, let us know where you're coming from today and, and what your specific questions are around digital marketing. So, Salil, fantastic to see you. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me, Peter. And it's just a great course that we've created. So I'm glad we get to talk about the course and discuss things today. Fantastic, Salil. And we'll certainly get into a little bit more details about the course uh, a little bit later on. Um, but Salil, just uh, as everybody is saying hi in the chat, and we, we really would love to see your questions, and we'd really love to know, uh, you know, which university you're at or where you're actually located today. Uh, you know, we often have people from all over the country at our various different universities, and also internationally now. Uh, you know, we've had some really successful webinars with really, you know, lots of different uh, universities and countries and cities dialing in uh, to say hi. So let's have a look. Senzeni Ngobeni from University of Limpopo. Uh, welcome and good afternoon to you. Uh, Valerie, good afternoon, joining from Johannesburg. Uh, fantastic to have you here. Uh, Mons from University of Limpopo, South Africa. And just a reminder, as we've got quite a few more people dialing in now, we're talking today about this field of marketing. Um, and then if you're in that field, uh, if you're studying in that field or if you're already working in that field, you know, and you want to, you know, grow in your career, you're going to have to go and sit and interview. You're going to have to uh, market yourself potentially um, and the field itself has changed dramatically over the last couple of decades uh, particularly as digital platforms have come in and Salil is an expert digital marketer he started and scaled and run a number of very successful businesses and trains people on digital marketing itself but we're going to look specifically around how you are going to need to position yourself uh, as an expert in digital marketing uh, in your interview. So, Semen, uh, very great pleasure uh, to help you guys out with this. And as I sort of explained in our introduction, we go live here on the Student Success Coach every Friday at 12 o'clock. And those of you that missed my introduction, last Friday, 
Uh, here in this webinar, we actually gave away three laptops uh, to deserving members of the Student Success Coach community. And as I was explaining earlier, Tracy Ashington uh, has joined us today. And Tracy surprised all of us last week because we were expecting her to announce just one of our three finalists to be the winner of that laptop. And when she joined the uh, webinar, she said, I've got a big surprise for you guys. Um, she's been on the phone with our anonymous donor and she was able to donate uh, from that anonymous donor three uh, laptops. So all three of our finalists uh, last week were able to get laptops. And I've been inundated with requests for us to run that again uh, because I think it's a huge need uh, for people to have the right equipment. Uh, but unfortunately, we're not in a position to do that very regularly. But I'm sure that Tracy will let us know if and when that opportunity comes up. Right. So I want to get Salil uh, to introduce himself and take us through what we want to cover today. Um, but let's just say one last uh, hello to Nzali uh, from University of Pretoria. So fantastic to have you uh, with us today, Nzali. All right. So, Salil, let's start with maybe just a broader question. Um, this field of marketing, um, it's been disrupted by, you know, these digital platforms. You know, give us your sense, you know, over the last sort of 10, 15 years, where this disruption has come from. And just at an industry level, you know, with all these platforms available and people on the call today, you know, wanting to make a career um, in driving digital marketing for products and services for our organizations that they're going to work for. Just give us, you know, from an industry perspective, what are the key themes and things that people need to be thinking about? Right. So, so in terms of marketing and how it's moved to digital marketing, what really happened, the transition came from the ability to target, right? With digital marketing, you got a lot of things. Your actions were measurable. Your actions were targetable. Your actions were specific and your actions were coordinated. Whereas let's say in traditional marketing, you hire a billboard. You have no idea who's looking at the billboard. You have no idea how they're responding to it. Do they like it? What's the audience? You had no data. But digital marketing gave you all this form of data that you can just start exploring and start exploiting. Then what happened was Facebook launched Facebook Pixel where they allowed you to track each and every user and gave you in-depth detail of every user. So with Facebook Pixel, you not only had now have the IP address of the visitor on the website, you knew their name, you knew their age, their income, their interest, you knew everything about that because Facebook had all that data and it started giving out that data to its users. Now, because of that, digital marketing became very powerful. So even if I sell a product, I can sell that product to two different types of audiences. And when we create customer persona in a marketing course, we can sell that uh, product to same two different types of customer persona, but target them separately, create new marketing campaigns for them, specific market campaigns for them with the features that are relevant to that specific group of people and that customer persona. So digital marketing really transformed how we advertise, how we market, how we even create products. Because with digital marketing, you can take feedback first from the audience that you are going to create the product for, whose need you're solving, and then create the product as well. So it helped in feedback, it helped in innovation, it helped in every aspect as it because you can connect directly with the audience, with your relevant audience, and then give them and provide them value. So that's, that's why digital marketing is being preferred over traditional marketing. Because it's more efficient, you get you retag to the customer, the need you're solving, and all of that makes digital marketing very powerful, which is why most companies are now hiring digital marketing experts because they want to transition to just doing broad-based awareness campaigns to even specific targeted campaigns where they can actually even generate sales. So I think that's the future where it is. That's where the jobs are. More jobs are being offered for digital marketing as compared to traditional marketing. Uh, people are looking for experts and even in digital marketing uh, companies are looking for experts in every field. So Google SEO expert, uh, Google search engine expert, Instagram, social media, Instagram expert. So all these are great methods and great platforms. And that's why digital marketing is very powerful and relevant at this age. Right. Thank you, Sil. So, I mean, I guess what you're saying is um, previously you'd spend a lot of money to put a billboard up on the side of the highway and you'd have to assume, you know, all the people driving past that billboard, uh, you wouldn't know anything about them. Uh, the only thing you'd know about them is that they were driving past that billboard at that time. But now instead of, you know, people driving all over the place and relying on big, bull, ex big, big expensive billboards, now people are scrolling, right, on their devices and based on their interests and based on their usage of those social media platforms, 
the targeting that you're talking about is very much more based on the behavior that those platforms have been able to analyze and even the data that they've entered about themselves. So I'm a certain age group. I have these certain interests. I visit these certain sites. I'm actually interested in these specific products. It might be that I already have an interest in a certain product. And I think we all know of the story where you could be uh, having a WhatsApp chat with somebody saying, I need to buy a new uh, dishwasher. And then all of a sudden, when you're on Facebook, uh, adverts for dishwashers uh, start showing up in your feed, right? And that's the power of data and the usage of the platforms, right? So, I mean, I guess that's the targeting uh, that you're talking about, where it's actually at such a micro, almost one-to-one Uh, level to the organizations that are selling those products. But just talk about that dishwasher example, because I think we've all experienced that. Um, I even know of people who will uh, talk about uh, buying a dishwasher and they'll have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, uh, which was potentially hearing their audio. And then without actually typing anything in or visiting any websites, they will see something pop up on a social media feed related to what they were talking about with somebody in the same room as an Alexa Echo or a Google Home? Is, is that actually happening? Uh, ideally, it should not happen, Peter. And technically, it should not happen. The dishwasher example, when you talk about saying it on WhatsApp, it should not happen because WhatsApp does end-to-end -end encryption, as it tells us. And even though Facebook has acquired uh, WhatsApp, it cannot break the uh, encryption. So only you and I can see the messages. So that should not happen on a WhatsApp chat. But yes, if you search on Google, it will happen. If you search on Facebook, it will happen. If you go on a website of a dishwasher or a, um, on a Amazon or something like that, yes, it will definitely happen because all the websites have, have basically pixel and codes installed uh, and cookies installed that track your activity across the internet. And uh, a great thing about digital marketing is when iOS 15 came in, Apple in in, introduce these privacy uh, restrictions where you can toggle off being tracked by all the websites and your tracking history being tracked. So if you turn that off, Facebook will no longer be able to track which website you go on. And that's why Facebook revenue has been down. Facebook uh, share stock price dropped 20%. Um, they, they missed their revenue estimates, their profit, all of that. So Facebook is having a real bad time now because Apple said, stop it. Stop tracking our users, stop tracking their activity and stop seeing everything they do. So, so, yes, it's a very uh, gray area in terms of ethics and uh, privacy is a big concern. And I, I, I sure that, hap that happens to you. Uh, but what is in general, if you talk about a broad sense, that you do leave footprints, right? Let's say you have a pet, you're a pet owner. You will leave that footprint. You will search for pet food, pet products and something like that. So from a digital marketing point of view, it's great for the company and for the brand because I know you have a pet. So I know I can sell you the dog food or I can sell you that new pet latest toy. So that's great from a company's point of view, not so great from a user's point of view. Um, and, and that's where sort of the ethical area is coming where Facebook is now limiting the type of interest it can track. They, they are limiting the type of uh, number of um, pages being tracked. You can turn off app tracking. You can turn off various tracking. There is private browsing, incognito, using VPN. So users are also doing multiple things to not be tracked. Um, but what the gray area will settle down as per my interpretation is it'll be at a point where you will have a great experience browsing because at the end of the day, as a dog owner, you are looking for great dog products to keep your dog entertained or healthy and stuff like that. So you should get some healthy feed of advertisements and things that interest you but not to the point where you're being, your every move is being tracked and you know, you're know you being scammed or you're being tracked, forced into buying things you don't want to. So mm -hmm. I, think, I think as digital marketing executives, even for the interview and going on the, the topic of the webinar, if we pitch this ethical way of you know, finding attracting users that have the need, right? We are, we are trying to attract users that need the product that we are selling. And we do that in an ethical way using digital marketing by targeting them. We can definitely give value to the customers, bring more value to the company, and then grow our digital marketing platform to that value. Super, Salil. So a question from our audience there. Mons asks, what are the difficulties in digital marketing in comparison to traditional marketing? 
So, so great question. And and the thing is, digital marketing requires uh, very specific knowledge and more specification in each and every segment. So even in Google, you can be either an organic expert or a, a AdWords expert. And even in AdWords, you can be, you know, how to optimize ads. That's an entire process. So what's happening in digital marketing is because of the further uh, expertise and specification, you have to sort of know the overall digital marketing landscape, but then you have to constantly specialize in something, some specific platform. And even in Google or Facebook or some specific platform, there's a lot of trial and error that you have to do. You have to work for a few years. You have to get that experience to really understand what really works, what's the best way to optimize a campaign, what are the levers that work well, and then with that combined with the theoretic knowledge and the experience, then you get good at digital marketing. Very interesting. Okay, Sadil, so that's fantastic. And then, I mean, you spoke about the different platforms now, so I'd really love to just get into a little bit of a discussion on each of the platforms and help the audience understand how they can showcase their knowledge um, in those platforms. But maybe one or two quick questions before we get there. Uh, Simon asks, what short courses uh, can one do to upskill themselves towards becoming a digital marketing expert? So funny that you asked that question because uh, both Salil and I do have a couple of courses uh, which we are going to talk about just now. Um, but I wanted to pick up on this question as well. I've been working as a copywriter throughout university, but I do not be limited to only copywriting. Well, having this experience assisting in finding a marketing position. So, Salil, let's just talk a little bit about the importance of copy. Um, and, and that's the text, right? That's the, the written word, you know, that people put on digital marketing content and then digital marketing as a career. So just explain for us the link there and perhaps help this audience member, you know, how they can look for the maximum amount of growth uh, in their career, but without not being limited to copywriting. Yeah, so first of all, um, you can see that she's a great copywriter because of the way the question is written. It's so perfect. Even on the internet, you know, you've written a perfectly structured uh, sentence, yeah. which is great. So it just shows how uh, dedicated you are to your craft. And more than that, it's about skill development, right? So in, the, in addition to copywriting, what other skills can you develop that will complement it and that will help you and open more avenues? For example, sales copywriting, right? So you learn sales, you add that to copywriting, and now you can help course creators like myself as well sell our courses better, write our course copy better, or sell any other product or service better. Similarly, you add uh, copywriting with digital marketing, then you can help brands sell on the internet or their sales copy or their Facebook ads or write ads or write content. But then that combines the copywriting aspect. So what you need to do is combine various skills with the core of copywriting, and that will help you find marketing positions because you have the additional skills that help you market the copywriting aspect of it, right? So, so uh, for example, as a digital marketing expert, I know how to create an ad, but my sales copy or the text I write in the ad is terrible, right? It, it doesn't relate, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, engage the audience or it's not proper. So that's when I get someone who's a copywriting expert to come in and improve my sales copy. Right. So when I can combine the two, that's where the magic will happen when, you know, you can add multiple skills and then you create that marketing benefit for yourself. Right. That's interesting, Salil. So I guess um, the second part of that question, uh, and as you say, a brilliant copywriter, they've got part one and part two. Uh, the reason they were asking is because graduates get thrown into sales to gain the needed experience and they're wondering if they can avoid that with their experience, I'm in second year. So let me give my initial perspective is that, you know, sales is the lifeblood of an organization. So I think that from an organizational perspective, they want people uh, talking to customers, you know, really getting out into the world uh, to experience uh, the life of the customer. And, and Salil mentioned this important point of the avatar or the persona. And when you do your digital marketing strategies, you always need to think from the customer's perspective back into the organization. And just my perspective you want to do, um, obviously you don't want to do it for the whole of your career, but at least a year or two, just to really get close to your customers and to understand them, that will make you a better copywriter. It'll make you a better digital marketing expert. So I would advise 
don't try and avoid that experience. Be willing to go into the sales front line, um, but then you know, have a, a, an expectation that you are going to come back into that copywriting, digital marketing experience. Even when I was a, um, a CIO in IT, we used to have sales days and we would target you know, customers on a monthly basis on a certain day and everybody would go out and meet with those customers. And I would go and join our sales teams in meeting with our customers as an IT person because even in IT, I need to understand our customers. Every part of the business needs to understand your customers. So, Salil, maybe you want to add on to that, just about the importance of getting some type of sales experience, but obviously with the expectation that you want to go into depth as a, a copywriter or a digital marketing uh, expert in your company. Yeah, so, so what will happen with that experience is you learn a lot of uh, real-world limitations and real-world relevance. So, for example, the question that you asked us, you'll have to ask the same question in 30 characters on a Facebook ad. You'll have to ask the same question in 120 characters on a Google AdWords campaign, right? You'll have to ask the same question as a, a description in a YouTube video for a video ad. So what will happen is you'll get to apply your same skills, but based on the limitation and real life applications of those skills. And that's why the experience is very valuable because you really learn how to apply your skills uh, and then adapt those skills based on the real world requirement. For example, if Peter and I, we have a blogging course and we require someone to do blogging as a ghostwriter for us, we give the limitation that the blog has to be maximum 500 words with a hundred words uh, paragraph, 500 word paragraph. Now you have to work with those limitations because, and when you do that, when you get that experience from us, you can then write blogs for other people as well because you understand the blogging format. It's the same with ads, it's the same with anything on digital marketing. You have to combine that experience with your knowledge and expertise in order to make it more relevant and make it more useful for the real experience. Yeah. Thanks, Salil. Appreciate that. And I want to get into a bit of a platform by platform uh, discussion, uh, but just the follow up comment. Thank you for your perspective. Spent a year in sales during a gap year and it was tiring. So I have the greatest amount of respect for people who have sales as a career. And uh, Salil is an expert in training uh, sales people, sales managers, sales organizations, and he has a range of courses uh, for sales people specifically. So if any of you uh, are close to sales teams and you're looking uh, to train those people up to become the greatest salesman uh, or saleswoman, uh, please do get in touch with Salil or point them to uh, his courses because he really uh, does provide all of that expertise um, in his courses. So just linking on from that discussion about a uh, sales experience uh, and then going on into doing copywriting and digital marketing, uh, Valerie asks um, how she can create a digital marketing career with sales experience. Uh, she's been in FMCG, um, but wants to go a little bit more uh, into marketing uh, and possibly digital marketing specifically. So Salil, what are some specific next steps that Valerie can take? I mean, the first next step, Valerie, is to do our course, okay? Uh, so we'll we'll give you a link to the course just now. But uh, Salil, you know, how can Valerie move from sales into digital marketing? Yeah, so so from from digital marketing standpoint, it's more about going into the messaging and the communication of the product rather than the selling the product, right? So you have to learn more about um, product messaging, product targeting, creating customer persona. So all these are marketing subjects uh, that are more relevant to the marketing aspect of it rather than the sales aspect of it. So in, in terms, you can do multiple things. One, you can obviously learn um, skills uh, based on our courses on Udemy, uh, Skillshare and all these places where they teach you more marketing concepts. It's the same as a business school, but the, you can learn relevant skills and how to actually do that for your product. So, for example, in one of my courses, we ask you, what's, what is the product you're selling? So, in your case, it's the FMCG product, right? Now, what you have to do is create separate marketing uh, channels for each FMCG product and then go into, are you selling to wholesalers or uh, retailers or are you selling direct to customers, right? Now, if you're selling direct to customers, what kind of customers? Create that persona, create details about them, how to target them, what needs are you fulfilling, how does that reflect in the packaging? How does it reflect in the product? How does it reflect in your advertising, your structure, the way you're communicating? So all of that is about marketing. So that you set the, the tone is set by the marketing, execution is done by sales. So you tell them what to sell and how to sell, and then the sales does the selling. But then with marketing, you want more to the thought side, the thinking side, the strategy side. And that's where you create the product. You create 
the idea and the relevance behind the product. So that's where uh, marketing will take you. So for that, you need to upskill, um, go a step back on the product, learn more about the products, the skills required to improve the product, and those marketing concepts will definitely help you improve your marketing skills and then make that transition. Yeah, I think we, we also have a question on uh, by Sam on what are the some trickier digital marketing questions and how we can approach them. Uh, so we'll also pull up a trick question, a trick Q and A lecture we have specifically in our course um, that gives you a list of trick question and answers and even how to answer those trick questions, how you should approach them, uh, how you should tackle those questions. So all of that is covered in the course because I'm aware. Um, because I take uh, digital marketing interviews that we always ask these trick questions to trip up the uh, uh, candidate because we want to test their confidence, we want to test their abilities, their knowledge, and all of that while we're testing, we ask these trick questions to see how they handle those questions. So we'll definitely go into a section about trick questions and I'll share all the answers there are for those trick questions as well. So Salil, so let's have a look at that now then quickly. And uh, so I've got the course up here and you were just talking about uh, those trick questions. So, I mean, let's have a look at that. Uh, that's one of the lessons there. So maybe let's just go into that, um, you know, as you were answering Simon already. And there's a lot more value and video lessons that they can get from enrolling uh, into the course. Um, but uh, we're just looking at your teaching uh, in the course, and I'm going to pop up, um, you know, this list here, for example. So are there any there that you maybe wanted to touch on uh, in more detail? Yeah. So, for example, the first question uh, is a trick question is, can we create the same KPIs? KPIs are key performance indicators across channels for easy tracking, right? So a lot of times companies fall into that uh, trap is, and they'll ask you, for example, impressions on YouTube, impressions on Google, impressions on Facebook, and impressions on LinkedIn are completely different forms of impressions. Because on YouTube, you will have higher impressions because there are more users that are scrolling through videos. On Google, your impressions will be less, but they'll be higher quality because they've searched for those exact keywords that you're targeting and they're interested in those keywords. Impressions on LinkedIn will be even further lower, but higher sales because they're professionals and business people who are more likely to make business decisions and give you sales, right? So impressions in itself are different ways and you have to track them differently across channels. Same with views, same with clicks, same with click-through rates. So all the metrics of digital marketing will vary across all channels and all platforms. And the way I have answered this question uh, is the same way you have to do in an interview. So if someone talks about kick, uh, performance indicators in digital marketing interview, tell them that, sir, digital marketing interviews have to be separate. The indicators have to be separate based on each platform. The success on each platform varies. Uh, based on the way the platform works and the way you do the ad. So that's how you answer the question. You show confidence. You show your understanding of digital marketing platforms. Uh, you show your ability to convey your understanding of the platforms. Give an example, for example, an example of impression. Or you can give an example of clicks as well because you're higher or more likely to get clicks on YouTube, whereas you're less likely to get clicks on Google and even more li less likely to get clicks on LinkedIn. Right. So give examples and then bring the conclusion back that all indicators are unique, all platforms are unique, therefore each platform has to be tracked separately with their own performance indicators and metrics of success. I love that one question that you teach in the course there. Uh, can you get our company on the first page of Google? So maybe, <laughs> I mean, as you talk about that trick question, you know, let's talk about Google um, as a platform and how you can showcase your knowledge um, on Google, but, you know, maybe just go into a bit more detail on the answer for that trick question there, uh, and then Salil lead into Google as a platform uh, for showcasing your knowledge in a digital marketing interview. Yeah, so absolutely, right? Like, uh, this question is more from the perspective of a small business owner, because all small business owners want to be on the first page and want their business to grow 100x overnight, but that will never happen, right? Because Google algorithm tracks a lot of factors. One of them is age. So all the websites that have been there for a longer period of time that have more ranking, more authority will rank higher. Second is number of visitors per month. So uh, let's say you want to sell a product. Amazon is getting millions of users on their website and you want to sell a similar products, but your website will obviously rank lower because Google knows if they send someone to the company, if they send someone to Amazon, 
they will have a better experience in sending someone to a newer website that they do not trust or not aware of right so google has thousands of different uh, metrics that go into the google search algorithm so no you will not be on the first page but the easier way is to be on the first page for long tail keywords that's the best answer because long tail keywords are easier to rank for for example uh, let's talk about shoes right uh, you will not be able to rank number 1 for shoes unless you have millions and trillions of billions of dollars as marketing budget but you can rank for uh, best shoes to buy in new york that's a keyword that you can rank for because it's it, it's specific to new york and best uh, sneakers for example so you're targeting a type of shoe targeting a location and when you get into long tail keywords you can rank number 1 so as a small business or even as a big business it's always better to target these keywords that have less competition have higher volume of course but they are less competitive than those generic base keywords and when you do that then you can get on the first page but you cannot get on the first page for keywords that are highly competitive have companies that have billions and millions of dollars of ad budget and you cannot out compete those but you can out compete on long tail keywords so that's the best strategy to do this year Fantastic, Sudil. That is so helpful, and I mean, just you know, the exact question that our audience member asked about tricky questions. Um, you've got a couple of lessons on exactly that topic uh, in the course. So I think investing uh, in this course, you know, really is a good idea, um, so that people have the information they need to be successful uh, in getting the job they want, which is going to be a return on that investment uh, of at least uh, 10x. So if we go then and we stick with Google. I mean you've got this fantastic lesson here on on Google as well as a platform uh in terms of showcasing your knowledge so let's just maybe you know touch then on um from a recruiter's perspective um what they likely to ask you and this we assume is a knowledgeable recruiter that understands these platforms let's just go a little bit deeper then into testing uh, a Google knowledge and maybe just use a couple of the points uh on the slide that you use um in your lesson on this topic Salil Yeah so Google will always be split in an interview between organic aspect of Google which is the search engine optimization aspect and the ad aspect which is the paid or SEM search engine marketing aspect so you'll have to be either interviewing for Google in general but usually you uh, interview for Google in terms of your SEO role where you work on organic aspect or you work on ads and optimizing the campaign so first it will be the interview questions or the interview will be split between those two Now let's get into uh, search engine optimization. The first question will always be, what are the factors that go into search engine optimization? Because that these are the things that are relevant, and this is where your time is to articulate your knowledge of search engine optimization by talking about that there are a lot of factors and talk about pick a few uh, factors and then talk about those factors. For example, start with authority ranking, start with backlinks. You can talk about on-page SEO. keywords title h1 h2 the top titles then body of the uh, aspect of it then talk about uh, creating a, a tree a link tree for those uh, was web creating those backlink centers so all of this is seo split it into on page seo where you talk about all the things that you can do on the page itself i always like to personally use tools that help me optimize my on page seos because of their lot of factors so yoast seo is a great tool on the website that helps you optimize that Uh, it will tell you you know how your sentence structure is what grammar you're using the length of sentences and all of that so that is on page seo and then we move on to off page seo where it's more about you know we have to generate more backlinks get more people to refer to the website uh, get our authority ranking get higher authority ranking website to refer us as authoritative content that has credibility um, we guest blogger on other blogs so all of that is off page seo right so you have to give this sort of complete answer when it comes to google of uh, on page off page seo what are the factors and that convinces the recruiter that they understand seo they understand the world they understand the uh, logic behind it now when we move down the course we go into the strategy aspect of it so this is just telling that you know google right but then how will you help the company grow on google that's the second part that's the strategy so there you talk about how you will create a content strategy uh which will help them uh, grow their content which will help them rank for long tail keywords then you talk about how you will create a backlink strategy where you will grow the number of links so all of this is part of the course where we talk about the platform platform knowledge strategy and then how to align your strategy with the company's goals and company's objectives so for example you can see in this lecture about alignment with company goals 
question is what is the company's brand or product but then the second question is what is the company's goals so for example it's increase sales now you have to give a google seo strategy that will help them grow their sales but on the other hand a company can be launching a new product let's say they launch a new innovative uh, hair care product now the company's goal will be education now the best way to educate anyone on google is through creating blogs and content because that content is educational informational and will help you educate right now here going straight to sales and running ads will not be efficient but a good content strategy will be more efficient so that's where you have to understand the platform understand the strategy and then combine them with what the company wants of you in terms of what product they're selling what their objectives are and what the company's goals are and that combination is what you would pitch and i think uh, peter there is also a lecture on how to create a pitch uh, of uh, combining all these things where i give you multiple pitches that you can give any recruiter and that's how we sort of bring the course together and that's how you learn to uh, sell on our platform yeah so leal i just love your point there about um instagram being a great uh, platform for selling uh makeup because uh my sense is that instagram is very much around that you know photographic sort of uh fashion and design and sort of modeling you know sort of type of uh, audience and uh seems to be the platform of choice uh for people to you know really share those uh, amazing photographs uh from all of those industries um so just valuable insight there you know in terms of aligning to the company goals and then picking the right platform and having the right digital marketing approach uh based on what the of the company are um uh simon says uh she's a follower of our videos and did multiple courses of ours and tracy uh so simon yes just to answer your question previously we are going to be able to give you discounted access uh into this course and i'll share that link uh very shortly um but uh, salil just with sort of 10 15 minutes left i wondered whether you wanted to just briefly talk about then some of the generic uh interview uh type of lessons that we've got um in the course which uh i teach so um this is all the preparation that you can do uh, as you prepare for an interview uh whether it's in person or uh virtual potentially do you want to touch then on some of those things that we also teach in the course Yeah, you will be best to touch on your lectures um but, but it's it's amazing how um i talk about digital marketing but then when it comes to an interview there's so many things that are necessary for the interview how to prepare how to mentally prepare for the interview how to approach the interview what to do during an interview and what to do during after interview and peter has this amazing lecture about virtual interviews because all the things that we used to teach in the past regarding interviews they are sort of um not as relevant is what to do during an interview so for example having the contact having that eye level contact with the person right having the display or the camera at the eye level so you can make eye contact um capturing their attention looking at the recruiter so all of those things that are more essential in the virtual interview rather than a traditional interview that also peter covers in in amazing detail uh, that will help you set up for most kind of interviews or all interviews not just digital marketing because the way to approach an interview is common right you have to be confident you have to exude confidence showcase your knowledge be aware be on time uh, be respectful maintain the tone so all of those things are greatly covered in this course yeah thank you salil appreciate that and uh just to continue talking through some of those generic aspects uh we've got then obviously arriving at the interview and first impressions um handling questions uh in an interview there's some very specific things that we take you through there uh in terms of how you can manage your body language your eye contact uh, rephrasing the question uh that you're asked into the first part of the answer and that gives your brain a chance to catch up uh and uh, tell your mouth uh, what to say even though you are a little bit nervous those extra few seconds uh can be very useful uh, but then as tracy has taught a number of times in these webinars um you don't always have to answer every question uh, in an interview you can always promise to get back to the person after the interview um and that then is a great way of maintaining contact um with the organization um afterwards um and then we talk about for example some of the do's and don'ts uh, like you were saying in a virtual interview um and what you need to be conscious of and how you need to set up your background etc and then of course after the interview what are some of those things how do you 
uh, follow up properly in addition to answering any questions that you perhaps didn't get to uh, in the interview? How do you even manage that uh, phone call that you are hopefully going to get? And it's going to be either some good news or some bad news. And I think the important thing that I teach there, um, and Tracy Ashington, as she's been uh, very visible and accessible in the many of these webinars, sort of coaches people to go through interviews, to do virtual interviews, um, you know, will always advise you, uh, make sure that you get that written offer. Uh, if it is a positive feedback uh, from the organization after the interview, you don't have to make a decision on the phone, uh, even though you're excited. Uh, make sure that you uh, look at it in detail and that it meets your expectations. And of course, if it's not positive, um, then you will just uh, you know, see that interview as a learning opportunity and you'll be able to grow from what you've learned um, on into uh, the next interview. So that's, uh, I think, it in terms of the course content that we're going to share. Um, so, Lil, maybe if you want to talk about then just uh, you know, the support that people will get um, in the interview, and I'll share the discount code if you want to just uh, touch on the process that people will have to take when they enroll uh, in the course and go through the lessons. Uh, you know, will you be accessible in the course uh, to answer questions and be visible and active as an instructor? Um, even if people have got interviews coming up, uh, will they be able to message you, etc.? Uh, what is the value that Salil? Yeah, I think I think I dropped off. Sorry. Yeah. So Salil, just want to explain to everybody as I put the link to the course into the chat. What's the value that people will get? You know, we've been through the features, uh, but what's the value that they'll get? They'll obviously have those video lessons, and we've uh, shown a couple of those. But will they be able to get in touch with you, for example, if they've got specific questions around digital marketing interviews? Uh, will you be able to give them some follow-up and some support and some announcements and future promotional offers, et cetera, in either you know this course or other courses? How does it work uh, for people when they're going to sign up into our course on digital marketing interviews? Yeah, so absolutely. So we are. It's it's not just a video course. It's it's a course, right? It's it's a it's a partnership that you have with us, um, where we you know constantly give you give back to you, and we learn from you. So there are there's a Q and A section, there's a quiz section, uh, there's a learning section. So and there's a messaging section. There's also social media links that we have. So you can message us whatever questions you have. We are obviously we are very active on the course. Um, we consider it a partnership. You can not only just message us, what you can also do is reach out to us on social media. We are very helpful there as well um, to all our course students. Um, so it's it's a partnership, right? Uh, and more than that, we learn from you. So whatever your interview experience is, you tell us, we, help, we are able to help you. And then we are able to teach the same thing that you talk to us about in our lectures as well. So one of the lectures we did, um, the trick question was added because there was another student that was asked that trick question. So I, I added that into the lecture as well. So we constantly update the course based on your feedback as well. So as I said, it's not a one way street, it's a partnership. The more you guide us, the more you teach us, the more you share with us, that's how the partnership grows strong and it works both ways. So we will be very active as long as you're part of this course. This is a course that gives you lifetime access. Uh, and uh, thanks to Peter, um, you get that lifetime access for the course and because you get that lifetime access, we're always there to help you in a, in a, as a partnership to whatever position you're in or whatever part of life you're in. We're always there. That's wonderful. Thank you, Sunil. And then also, Sunil, just to mention that, you know, we, um, based on your knowledge uh, of digital marketing, teach not only candidates uh, to ace their digital marketing interview, uh, but we also have a similar course for recruiters and hiring managers. Um, so given that a lot of people on the call today, um, you know, will be in that field, if you are aware of uh, recruiters and hiring managers and Tracy, uh, you may know of some of your, in your network, for example, um, you know, please do point them to uh, Salil's course on, uh, you know, how to uh, learn to recruit uh, for digital marketing interviews, because the knowledge is very much the same. Uh, but the way that you ask the questions or you answer the questions uh, is going to be a slightly different. Uh, Simon, uh, wow, thank you. This video is the reason why Peter, Tracy, and Salil are angels on earth. <laughs> Expert skills made accessible to all of us could not 
have asked for Better Friday. Well, it's a real pleasure, I must say. And Simon, we're looking forward to seeing you in the course. And as soon as you introduce yourself there in the course, uh, Salil and I will welcome you into the course and we'll help you through those uh, lessons. And as Salil said, it's not just a, a bunch of videos. Um, the type of interaction that you get uh, through this webinar and the access that you'll have to Salil uh, and his knowledge on digital marketing and myself on the generic aspects of the interviews are all the things that you invest in uh, when you enroll into that course. And as Tracy says in the chat, uh, just going back to the point I made earlier about the fact that you don't have to answer all the questions in the interview, it's a sneaky way to get their email address uh, so that you have that touch point um, with the organization afterwards. Okay, so I think we're going to start bringing it to a close now. I also just wanted to mention that I have put some links in the chat. Uh, obviously, the most recent one is the discounted access to the course. So hop onto the course landing page and enroll there and get all the fantastic benefits and features that we've been talking about in this webinar. There's also the Facebook group uh, for the Student Success Coach community, and you'll actually be able to go in there and see all the uh, excitement from last week's uh, laptop giveaway, as well as get access to all the experts like Tracy, who I've got up on the screen there now, um, who also has a number of other courses uh, that can be very helpful and supportive for you in your journey of being a successful student, getting out into the workplace. And the one that I'm thinking of at the moment is the uh, CV Masterclass, where you'll be able to put your CV together um, and learn from Tracy in that course and use the template uh, even that she provides uh, in that course as well. I've also um, put a link to uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel um, because many people ask about uh, the recordings for these webinars. So just use the same link uh, that you arrived here today. And uh, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, which I'd really invite you to do right now, uh, then you'll get notifications and reminders. And throughout the week, um, not just on Fridays, uh, we release lots of valuable coaching tips and tricks and videos uh, that really, I think, just create uh, that ongoing access to these experts and to this knowledge and to the support that you need um, to be successful. All right. So, Salil, as we bring this webinar to an end, any last thoughts from your side on uh, being a successful digital marketer and how to ace a digital marketing interview before we let everybody uh, go and have an awesome Friday and a, and a weekend ahead of them? I think we've lost a little there. So uh, we will close it now, guys. Thank you very much for uh, joining us all. And uh, just a reminder that um, the Student Success Coach website really is the best place uh, for you to go and get access to all of the courses and podcasts and blog articles and information like Simon mentioned um, earlier. One of the reasons uh, that she joins these videos is the incredible value that she gets uh, in the community that we've created uh, where people like Tracy and Salil and many others are just some of the experts um, that we bring into the community and that we interview here on a Friday or that join me in various different courses. Um, and so it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you in the course. Um, the link is there. So take action. Uh, go and invest in your skills and your knowledge. I saw a fantastic quote uh, this week. Uh, if you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you're willing to learn, no one can stop you. OK, so if you're willing to learn and invest in your skills, uh, no one can stop you from being successful. And we want you all uh, to be successful in your careers. And if your career is digital marketing, you'll need to ace your digital marketing career. So go and do that course uh, and get all the skills that you need there from uh, myself and Salil. With that, I'll say cheers and we'll catch you in the Facebook group and at next week's uh, live webinar. Cheers, everyone.